Today we're going to be talking about private and public cloud computing. Total CA has been managing high-performance compute clusters for FEA and CFD for nearly 19 years. We've also been doing public cloud computing for engineering for the last several years. Many customers are wondering which one to choose, should they do a hybrid strategy, and so this talk is going to talk about the pros and cons of each one of those methods, along with a few case studies at the end, and so let's just get started. So a challenge that customers have is that they want to take advantage of high performance computing, but there's quite a few pieces uh, that are required to get a solution to work. If you have one just piece of the puzzle that doesn't work, the solution doesn't function. And you're, not, you're stopped wondering, is it my model? Is it the cluster? Is it the computer? You know, what part of this is preventing me from getting the simulation done? And, and that's ultimately what the user wants. They just want to push the button and get the results back they don't want to have to deal with all, everything that can go wrong between those two steps. And often what a cus uh, customers face is that their provider of their high performance computing or cloud solution will uh, basically provide them the solution. It seems like it works. And then they depart. They kind of leave you on your own to fly the airplane and hope everything uh, you know, works. So often that might work for a week or a month or two months. But then suddenly, invariably, something goes wrong. You're not sure what, but now you can't get the answer. You're down. You urgently need to get your results back. But for some reason, the model is not solving properly or it's slowing down. And you're not sure to who to call. Maybe the software vendor thinks it might be the hardware. The hardware vendor might think it's the software. And, and, and you get into this finger pointing of who's to blame. And that's really uh, where you're like, I just want to get my solution done. You know, you know what, what can I do about this? And this is the problem that Total CE solves. Uh, on our private cloud solution, it's basically a shrink-wrapped box that we are responsible for everything inside of that box. It's the solver, it's the license, it's the cluster, it's the interconnect. You don't Anything that might be stopping you from doing your job efficiently from the time you push the button to the time the solution comes back is 100% our problem. And we will make sure that you're operating at peak efficiency, one number to call, we will determine everything that's wrong and get a resolution. Uh, and so that's basically the IT de department aspect. We are not only providing you all the software tools you need, all of the applications, all of the hardware, but we're also providing all the service to keep that thing running 24 by 7. You basically have IT department in a box, white glove service, 24 hours a day, uh, trying to keep that system up running at peak performance for you and your company. So some of the advantages of private cloud computing it's just very performant. I have a high performance system on premise, very reliable. These systems can run sometimes a year or two years of uptime, very scalable, very easy to add new nodes. You can easily go up to you know, hundreds and hundreds of cores uh, without much of uh, infrastructure change, very available and fairly cost effective. And you amortize the cost of a cluster system over three years. Uh, it's very cheap on a, on a monthly basis, and it's in, within the price range of even small to medium-sized companies. The real downside uh, to private cloud computing is the fact that there is a procurement cycle. So you will need to go to your management and typically ask uh, for money to get a high-performance computing system in-house or a private cloud. Um, if you don't have, if you have a system where your company will absolutely not allow a third party to manage uh, an IT system, that can be a challenge because these systems are, are highly complex and it's, it's very rare that uh, your in-house IT will have the expertise to manage it effectively. And there's also challenges if you don't have a data center. These systems generate a lot of power, need a lot of power, generate a lot of heat. Uh, they are not something that you would want sitting on your desk. They typically would go in, an, uh, in a cooled, air-conditioned room with special power plugs. And so if you don't have any type of facility uh, at, uh, that would accommodate for that, you know, there could be some costs associated with it and time. Uh, maybe you don't have the ability to do that facility's work. And so the, those issues sometimes can be answered by oh, what's called public cloud computing. A public cloud, you can think of it as basically a cluster that lives outside your data center that you're effectively renting. So the public cloud advantage is the aspect that I don't need to go to my management to try to uh, get a, a sum of money to put in high performance computing. I can put down my credit card, I can turn on a button, and I have instant capacity uh, 
to this high performance computing cloud that lives outside my data center. So that, that's, that is the uh, stated advantage of public cloud. Now the pricing can be uh, a disadvantage. It can be a little bit complex to figure out exactly what you're gonna pay. And the price of renting dwarfs the cost of owning. So if you are running these codes for a very long time and not just once a week or once a day, but basically if you find yourself running it more than two or three months out of the year, you end up paying significantly more to rent than to own. And it's very similar to other uh, businesses. Uh, if you rent it, it's always more expensive to rent than to buy. So you, you'll see that the per, what's called the per core hour price sounds very cheap. You know, six cents per core hour. Wow, that, that, that sounds like a cheap price. But if you consider just five compute machines at six cents per core hour, that's actually $315,000 over three years. You could have bought like a Lamborghini instead of uh, having the rented that time. Uh, and the cost of that cluster for five nodes is extremely cheap. A, a, a single compute node might, might cost $10,000 uh, and amortized over you know three years instead of spending you know you know in this case uh, fifty thousand dollars you spent three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars for the same core capacity same exact capacity and, a, and an interesting twist on uh, being able to put that credit card down and get an, an hourly rate is that eventually someone has to pay that bill and as you increase the amount of simulation you do we have seen uh, several t customers come. And their CIO say, you need to have the engineers stop spending money because we're getting very large bills from Amazon or Azure, what the case may be. And we want to uh, cap that. How can we put limits around the amount of engineering they can do? And while we all know that engineering saves money, I mean, simulation saves the company money, it's a little bit harder when you, to tie that when it's an exact cost, you know, that you see that simulation costs you and somebody's paying the bill. It looks like a place to save money instead of a place to do more engineering to save the company money. And when we have a private cloud or something on premise, we actually have the polar opposite requirements. We are being asked, how can we get those engineers to utilize the asset more? We want 95% utilization. We want them to be running these jobs around the clock, two in the morning, on the weekend. And so we actually uh, never have the conversation of how can we get the engineers to do less engineering? You just don't, we just don't have that conversation. So in distinguishing between public cloud and private cloud, uh, a key factor is that utilization. You know, if you end up having, uh, you know, 90% utilization, you would purchase enough on-premise capacity to meet the 90% of your use cases. If you have some overflow occasionally, you could either uh, rent that on the public cloud or you could just simply outsource the simulation to the vendor. You know, you have some options, but you don't necessarily have to buy for on-prem for the 100% case. You can buy at the 90% case. And the reason is, is basically is the cost savings. It's a much cheaper to put that on-prem and uh, for your majority use case, the day-to-day -day engineering that you do every day, constantly day in, day out, and save the, you know, you use public cloud for occasional uses, special projects, or maybe some overflow that you may have, or just simply wait in the queue longer. Uh, you know, you would then, uh, the pressure to go uh, outside is when the time you wait to get your simulation done exceeds what you, uh, your, your willingness to wait or you, may, you don't want to wait so long you can't impact the design, uh, you know, impact the design. And so what we found for uh, many uh, systems is that uh, a two-month break-even is very standard. So we'll run, uh, we run a lot of scenarios. Uh, a public cloud provider at 20 cents per core hour, uh, you know, our total CA Amazon public cloud at 10, 10 cents per true core hour, which I'll talk about later, and an in-house solution, uh, you know, it's basically a two-month payback. So if you use your cluster uh, constantly for all, all your codes, more than two months per year, which is, is very true for most mid-sized to larger companies, that they have a continuous need for high-performance computing, uh, you're looking at a two-month payback. Now, we wanted to mention that when you're choosing a cloud provider or a cloud system, realize that out of the box, most of these solutions aren't necessarily configured for high-performance computing. Uh, Amazon, for example, uses what's called a virtual CPU. That's a hyper-threaded uh, core. Uh, that is not the same as a real CPU on a piece of hardware you'd have on-premise. And so this is an example benchmark. Uh, you need running 160 vCPUs on the cloud versus 160 real CPUs. And lower is better. As you can see, it's almost three times as slow. 
And so you have to specially configure many cloud platforms to be more like an on-premise solution to get the performance. And if you do that, then the performance can be very close, you know, usually up to 100, 200 cores. It'll be within 10 or 20 percent. You'll be able to uh, achieve a similar level of performance. And uh, again, the, uh, you know, in this case, this is the uh, on-premise solution. Uh, this is a CFD model running up to 140 million cells and up to, you know, 300 cores. It scales very nicely and uh, gets a nice run, uh, many jobs per day. And uh, same on Amazon, on our systems uh, properly tuned with TrueCore, you'll see that you end up uh, around the same amount. It starts to drop off around 250 cores, the scaling. But if you just run under 250 cores for this model and you have sufficient licensing, uh, you know, that it's very similar in performance. However, for some types of codes, you, you'll run into a bandwidth challenge. So let's say your model generates a 20 or 50 gig output, like typical FEA type output. Even if the model gets done in about the same amount of time on premise, you eventually need to bring that model back. And that is where the bottleneck happens. So you have the cluster, uh, then you have to bring it to the internet and down to you. And that bandwidth can cost money, so there's a real cost associated. So sometimes the wait time to get your model back, uh, it can be frustrating for the engineer and is not necessarily worth it for them to have to uh, get the model done in the same amount of time, but then yet wait 30 minutes while they wait for the download. And that download time based on an on-campus system is usually very nil because the bandwidth on-premise on is very uh, high throughput typically for most customers. So you got to be aware that there is a large, you know, uh, uh, limitation. There is definitely solutions around that, around remote visualization, where they attempt to have all the engineering done in the cloud. You know, there's an emerging space there to try to prevent, you know, the download challenge that we see here. And then on public cloud, there's some idea of the fact that uh, the data sits outside of your data center. So. Uh, while most companies have been hacked, this is a quote from uh, uh, Peter Singer, you know, 97% have been, 97 have been hacked, the other 3% don't know. The disadvantage of having your data outside your firewall is while it may be just as secure as your on-premise, if they are hacked, you will do, your IT and your security people do not have insight into it. Uh, while on-premise, if there is a security uh, exploit or a security event, they will be able to track down what did those attackers steal? What did they gain access to? When it's outside your data center on a public cloud, that can be a lot challenging. They will not have visibility into the cloud platform security controls. They won't be able to see all the events to determine what, if anything, was hacked. And you know, you're kind of basically putting your faith in that third party that they will uh, let you know about it. And often these third parties, their EULAs are such that they are absolved of any kind of damages whatsoever if you know they, they are hacked and your data is stolen. Uh, so, uh, a, so our basically uh, strategy that you can implement is use your on-premise for your base constant engineering needs. You don't need to buy for peak, but that is the cheapest, fastest, most uh, e easiest to secure method that you have. And for maybe you have a special project uh, or something that uh, you're running out of capacity and your queue times are increasing, uh, you can use public cloud for that to be able to utilize um, a you know, rentable model where you can rent those cycles for your peak cycles. What we recommend is trying to avoid what we call a orchestration scenario. So often what we don't recommend customers try is to try to take their on-premise queue load and dynamically, magically make it go to the cloud and move it back and forth. And the reason that we kind of like a, a, a more prescriptive approach of I run on premise or I run on cloud is the engineer, one, sets their mindset. I'm going to the cloud. There's definitely a true cost that I'm going to be billed. I'm renting. Also, my performance might not be as good. Perhaps this model needs to 100% to be done tomorrow morning. Maybe the reliability on the cloud is not, public cloud is not as high. So there's a, a thought process uh, that needs to be done to choose which one. And, and for total CAE, our systems are quite simple. If you have the private cloud, this is an example for uh, Star CCM Plus. You're looking at uh, a web interface for the pu private cloud. When they go to the public cloud, it's the exact same interface. They actually don't do anything but go to a different browser URL. However, they'll know that when they go to the public cloud that that model is existing outside the data center. There is more billable time from the cloud platform, and they can make a mental shift of which way they want to go. 
So I'm going to go over some case studies where we've had these private and pu public cloud kind of scenarios. Uh, one was that we had a uh, customer that they had an immediate project. They wanted to win some new business. They did not have sufficient extra capacity to entertain this on their on-premise HPC private cloud. So, uh, and it would be about a four week lead time to get all the additional approvals, get the equipment, get it in house. Um, they really didn't want to have to relearn a new uh, interface just to be able to run their codes. They really just wanted to get the ground running, immediately running these models to try to win this new business. So Total CA turned on our public cloud interface that runs on AWS, and they had the exact same workflow like we showed before. They just pointed their browser to a new URL we sent. Uh, we uh, utilized uh, some rented licensing that they used for the solver, and they were able to run for about three weeks do the simulation they needed to win this business. And once they won the business, uh, they ended up, uh, that was a multi-year uh, engineering increase. So they added the new capacity in-house to save money, to, to save uh, because they were going to be running this constantly, more than two months per year. And then we turned back off that AWS public cloud for them. And it just kind of sits there waiting for the next time they might need a burst of capacity. And then it just turns on when the jobs show up and they can run them. So they were very happy. Uh, that they did not have to learn a new tool. They literally just pointed their browser somewhere else and were able to win that business. So we increased their agility for them. Uh, we had another customer that uh, they needed you know, a faster results in their current workstation, but they didn't have the expertise in-house. Uh, they did not necessarily, for this FEA model, wanted to deal with the complexity of a public cloud waiting for the results, and they didn't want to pay for that cost. But they, they knew they needed to get their results faster than just buying an additional workstation. So this was running Ansys Mechanical. They were running 12 hours on their old solution. Uh, we put in a new on-prem solution that got that result down to 1 hour and 15 minutes, which was basically a 90% decrease. So they were able to run more jobs you know, per day, get more engineering work done. You know, They had more capability in 13 months than they had in the last 10 years of running how they would. So a lot more engineering work could get, get done. They were able to impact uh, 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 warranty and do a lot better design. They, they had quite a few business benefits from being able to do this faster time to market, and they chose private cloud solution. Uh, we managed it completely to eliminate the need for IT to manage the, the HPC system. We also have a use of public cloud where storage is fairly cheap, uh, and, uh, but backing up storage or work in progress on-prem can be difficult. If you have hundreds of terabytes of storage, you know, corporate enterprise backup solutions can be very expensive. Uh, you know, they're made to back up ERP, uh, but this transient data may not be uh, as important. It's not cost effective to back up, but engineers want to back it up because they don't want to lose work in progress. You know, they have deadlines. You know, if the server would die or the storage would die, you know, they're copying it on hard drives. We've seen lots of uh, creative ways that uh, engineering teams are making sure that they can keep the uh, backups of their data. Uh, so what we have done is created a uh, product that uh, backs that up, pre-encrypts it onto the cloud, and lets the end user be able to self-restore it. Uh, so this way, if something accidentally gets deleted, within a few seconds they can restore it. You, for just a couple pennies per gigabyte, they can back up hundreds and hundreds of terabytes of work in progress at a very cheap cost. They won't need to restore that data. Uh, and they can store up to a petabyte of capacity. It has uh, you know, many nines of reliability, so and it's, multi it's uh, replicated across the globe, much, much more reliable than copying it onto uh, you know, external hard drives or putting it onto a tape backup. You know, there's no, uh, it's all self-service, so the engineer can get these, this data without really even knowing uh, any change in their workflow. They just do their work as normal. It automatically shows up on this archive drive, and they can automatically on their own get it back at any time without even involving IT, total CE IT, or on-premise IT. So that is called Storage Camel. So if you're interested in some of our other solutions that we offer or just learning more about public and private cloud computing, you can go to our Learn page at totalca.com. And we thank you for listening today to our event.